Hi guys, just a Betamax man. This is a Sanyo Beta cord. Um, Beta Hi-Fi machine. Um, this is a machine that is not listed online at all. I cannot find any information on this machine. This is a Sanyo 7500 is the model number. This is now what I do know about this machine is that it is a high-end machine. This was one of the, um, I, if I remember right, this machine has uh, four heads. So this is a four-head VCR with Hi-Fi stereo. I don't know 100% of its four heads. I think it is. But I'm not 100% sure, but we'll find out when we open it up. So I just literally just plugged it in. I just got this machine in today. We're going to turn it on. We're going to see if uh, it'll work. Uh, we want to test it out. So um, let's, it does power on. So, and it does have, um, this is kind of a, a digital it's a digital tuner. It isn't like the, uh, see this is uh, newer than the uh, 7200. Um, as you can see, it does have some mechanical, you know, aspects to it, but um, it is a, a digital tuner. It's not a full digital tuner, but, uh, you know, because you still have some manual controls like you know you have to move it from low to high this cover has not been put on properly i think this thing has been taken apart you can see the the gap in here it's not supposed to have a gap in there but so let's turn let's go ahead now we're gonna do a uh we're going to do a little review on this, so let's get the top off. Okay, so I had to clean this machine. It was extremely filthy on the outside. I have not touched the inside. This is the first time looking inside of this machine. So this is new to me as well. I have not yet looked, turned, turned it on, or looked inside, I mean. Right away, I can see some extra circuit boards. So right now, let's get a tape. I'm in, and right now we're gonna put in a uh, uh, tape. Let me get one that's. Here's one. Here's one we can use. And this is a uh, tape that was in one of the machines I was fixing, you know. And and uh, hey, Maui, you wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? Yeah, she wants to be. She's on camera. Say hi. Hi, Maui. Yeah. Anyway, so let's get a, uh, we got a, we got a, uh, my assistant here. She's my assistant, assistant kitty. And she's going to help me repair this today. But for right now, we're just testing it just to see what happens and see um, what it does. So let's put a cassette in. Okay, it does uh, load the cassette. Okay, pretty slow, pretty slow. Let's hit play. Okay, the minute we hit play, we have nothing. Um, so that's telling me that uh, We've got, we've obviously, we've got a, a belt issue. Um, so the only thing it does right now is goes in, and the tape will go in. That's about all it'll do. Let's take a look at the top. I want to take a look at this top. Let's get this top off. 
this video we're probably not going to do a re uh, repair we're probably just going to kind of take a look at it and diagnose it to see what's wrong with it and once I determine what is wrong with it uh, then I will repair it so in another video we will do the repair on this thing I have never torn into this particular model I've been wanting to get my hands on one for quite some time but this one when it gets repaired it's going to be sold it's not going to be for keeps um, okay so there's a uh, okay these boards are linked together so okay looks like yeah these boards are linked together so we need to take the screw off this side oh boy that's not good it's got a broken circuit board oh boy guys we're gonna have to fix that because it's got a broken broken circuit board and that's gonna affect that's gonna affect it playing and I don't know where the piece went inside. Here we go. Let's try to get that out. I thought I could hear something rattling around. Now yeah, that circuit board, I don't know where it went. trying to get this off uh, like I said I've never been into this one before so I have no idea okay so I'm gonna lift on this back end here that should allow us to get it okay that'll that'll allow us to stand it up on him like that Oops. Well, with that broken, that broken piece of the circuit board is a problem because I need to find the other piece. If I don't find the other circuit board, uh, because I need to find out. So we've got a broken board, so I'm gonna have to repair that board. We're gonna have to jump or. We're gonna have to use wire and solder in some leads. We're gonna have to jump the leads that are damaged on the circuit board. All right, that'll keep it. Uh, that'll keep it from. Um, that'll keep it up. Because right away, I'm thinking that the. Uh, idler belt is damaged I think the idler belt is completely toast I also think that the boat loading motor is toast it's kind of a different machine so. okay sorry guys my kitty wanted out um, Pretty, pretty sure that we've got a issue with some broken belts or belts that are just probably just sitting into place. That broken circuit board is something that concerns me. Um, okay, so. Yeah, the belt is completely shot. That belt is not going to do anything. It's completely dried out. Completely shot. Uh, we've got a... Uh, uh, we've got some tires down here. And we've got... I don't see the belt. I don't think the belt's... Uh, there might be a belt sitting on the bottom. 
Let's just see if we can get this thing to do anything. Now, it just occurred to me that that broken piece on the circuit board could be a reasoning for the motor not to go on and engage in the thread. Okay, okay, it's basically I'm going to thread it up here manually because I want to see if uh, it'll... Okay, let's see what happens if I just... Yeah, so it's, that's not going to... we got to get a new belt on there, so... Okay, I'm going to put a new belt on there before we go any further. Because we're not going to get anywhere with a, with a belt that's completely shot. So it is trying to load, but the belt is shot. I'm very surprised that the belt on the cassette housing is not chewed out, chewed up. But before we do anything we've got to change that belt so let's get that out and all right I'm trying to get my little i gotta get my little dental pick and i need to get my little pliers out here gonna take my pliers and grab a hold of it and pull it out. And it broke. Um, I'll show you guys. You see how uh, rock hard that is? I mean that is completely rock hard. And when I pulled it out Look at this. I mean, you can just tear the thing apart. So, I'm going to get a new belt. I do have a belt that will work for now. I don't have a new one. I have to order some new belts. But I do have used ones that we can use temporarily to get the machine up and going. Let's see. There's one. I'm not sure if that belt is going to work. Because that might be too big. Um, yeah, let's try this one. This one might be a little challenging to get it down in there. Sometimes you have to take the bottom off to get the belt slipped on over that. So. Let me get another belt, because that's going to be too big. Okay, uh, I got a belt in. And looking at the uh, head is, I think it's a three head. Um, yeah, because you've got one head, two head, three. Yeah, this is a three head machine, I think. I don't think it's four head, but I do know it's at least a three head machine. So I put another belt on it. The belt I put was back here. It's a used belt. I don't have a new one yet. Uh, I have to order some new ones, but this will work for threading it up. Okay. So the belt for the idler is also uh, damaged, I think, so we can eject this.
Let's try to rewind it. No, we won't do it. Okay, so we got a. Uh, I'm gonna set this down so you guys can see me working on it here. I just wanted to show you a close up. So we have that. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, the next thing we need to do is get a belt on the idler so that we can, because I wanna get this mechanical working first and then I can tackle the uh, circuit board that's broken. Okay, so. I hate it when it eats tapes. This is just a, a tape that I got and that was in uh, one of the other machines. And so I just use it now for testing purposes and uh, You know, this one's been recorded in Beta 3. Um, and it looks like it has, like, two movies on it. And they all look like, um, uh, medieval time movies. So, I'm just gonna mark that, because... It's good to have tapes in all three speeds. I'm on the hunt for a industrial machine, a SLO uh, four or no, what was it, an SLO three twenty three? Uh, because it's a beta one machine, and I'm looking for one of those. I am going to try to get one here within the next month or two. I want to get one because I need to have I need to have some recordings in the original Beta 1 because all mine are Beta 1S. I don't have any of the original Beta 1 recordings. So, um, at least for right now, I'm going to go ahead and we'll power down the machine because I don't want to short something out accidentally. And that is something that can definitely happen. You can definitely short something out accidentally. If you've got metal screwdrivers and you're accident and you accidentally, you know, short something out. Okay, here's the reason why this piece is all loose like this. This piece is completely broken. The uh screws are oh it's not broken the screws are missing somebody didn't put the screws back in when they were when they were messing with it but we'll get this top piece off I do have two brand new tires so I can put two new tires on today and with the used belts, it'll get it working so that I can... I do have... Um, brand new uh, idler tires, but I don't have any new belts. I've just got used ones that I can use temporarily. put these screws in and you can't it's hard to get a screwdriver in there if 
So I can't get a freaking screwdriver in there. I can't get it open. Yeah, I don't want to strip it, so I gotta try to get a different screw in there so I can open it up. Oh, it's sometimes when you, you know, you don't have the screws right in there, but, um, okay, let's get this one in there, I think, this one will work in there. Let's try to get one that I can get in there and, and, and loosen it up here, so. can do guys is we'll pull the panel off that will allow me access to the tires and belts so the belt is actually functioning somewhat it's the tires that are not functioning so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna shut the camera off i need to go get my dental picks so that i can get this e-clip off of here and we'll replace the tires and then i'll put a used belt on there for the idler and that should get it mechanically working then we can start focusing on this broken board and this broken board may or may not be broken enough to where the leads are gone. So here's the broken piece. You can see the piece broke. Now the piece is inside the machine somewhere. The machine fell down in here somewhere. So I'm going to have to find that. But this might even, we might get lucky that may not have anything to do with the uh, machine working that may have something to do with the tuner I don't know I'm hoping that that chip is not serious but we can we can repair it I can repair the board I just have to get the other piece so we're gonna cut back in and uh, so we're gonna get this e-clip off so we can get to the assembly, this idler assembly here. So, and the fact that I had a used belt to work on the loading gear, I've got a used belt for the idler and we're gonna have two new tires and that'll get it up and going again. I got the e-clip off. We'll start taking this apart. We'll start looking at the tires. You can see how bad they are. Look. You can see the cracking. You can see the the dry rot. So we'll put new tires on it. We're gonna put a new I'm gonna put a new tire on it. Um here's my washers. I don't wanna lose those. Don't want to lose washers, that's for sure. Alright, now look at the belt. That belt wasn't even doing anything. That belt was literally just sitting in there like that. And you can see how cracked and messed up this one is. This one's got it. Look how easily that tore apart. I don't really see, I mean the cracks aren't showing up on camera, but the cracks are on the, on the inside. See, there's the cracks. So, that was completely destroyed and shredded. Alright, let's pull that off there. The washers are still 
inside of that. I'm gonna put that right there for now. And we're gonna pull out this. Okay, guys. So, here are the two idler assembly. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put new belts, uh, new tires, and then we'll get a used belt that I have to put on there. And that should get the mechanical part work, and I, I hope it has a picture. Uh, you know, but sometimes they don't have pictures when you hook them up. Sometimes, you know, the mechanics can work, but the uh, picture is not there. Or there is no picture. You know, there's always something with these old machines. Because these machines are as old as I am. In fact, this one's probably... I was born in 86, and I'm thinking that this machine probably came out in 84 or something like that. So... Like, uh, this came out, like, this machine came out, like, two years before I was even born. Um, but, um, so, yeah, I just told you guys how old I am now, didn't I? Okay, so, uh, let's get these new tires on, and we're gonna replace them. We'll be right back. The, uh, well, you know what? I'll show you how to, uh, take these off. Basically, um... Take your, you can take your, your dental pick. Um, so what I do is, you go in, I got my dental pick here. I basically just go in behind it and, and get my pick in there. Get in there behind it and pull it out. This one is, still has some resistance, but you can see all the cracks in here so we'll just we'll just keep cutting at it until it comes off so there we go see it's just completely dried up and destroyed Look at that. See all those cracked and stuff? Look, that's all cracked and everything. Look, this thing, you can just pull it apart like that. You're not supposed to be able to pull apart that easily. The, the rubber on this is completely destroyed. But the rubber on this piece is worse than the other one. This one, you can see the cracks. You can really see the cracks and stuff in it, so let's go ahead and get this off here. Okay, so that one's broken. This one's coming off the same way, it's just kind of sliding off there. Uh, see the cracks in there? I'll try to show you the cracks and stuff that's in there. See that? Oh, look, you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to be able to break it like that, you know. Okay, so well, let's go over and grab my new tires over here. Um, these tires came from uh, Norvac Electronics. I put them in my, I put them in the, uh, Studio Sound Electronics bag. Because Studio Sound Electronics is who provides the belts. They used to provide the tires, but they no longer, they no longer do that, so. But, we have brand new, spanking new tires. And we're gonna put them on. And that is going to allow the machine to work. I thought I would do a video on here uh, just to kind of show you guys how to how to replace the, the tires. If you don't have the kit, you can't get the kit anymore. 
you have to buy the tires by themselves. You used to be able to get a kit that came with the belts, the tires, the the new uh, the new idler assembly. You know, you used to be able to get the whole dang thing. And because this rubber is nice and soft, it goes on pretty simple, so. Yeah, so this one kind of went on backwards. Nope, this one got twisted a little bit. <laughs> That might be a little hard to get it off now. It, it kind of got twisted on me a little bit. Yeah, I gotta fix that. So I'm gonna get my pick out. Basically, you know, you can take the dental pick and get the tire on like it's supposed to be. There we go. And the new tires are so soft and pliable, you can maneuver the tire over the over it without any issue. Now if you guys can't remember what one goes where, remember the one with the, the, the triangle shaped one here? This one always triangle goes on the top. Always goes on the top. So if you guys get confused and you don't remember how it goes back together, give me a comment and I'll, I'll let you know. So. Well, let's go ahead and put it back over on the machine. We're going to put it in. So if you do have a machine you're working on and you don't know what to do on something, give me a call. You know, you can you can uh, shoot me a comment below and I will answer any of your questions that you may have. Um, this is like my passion, working on these machines. It's therapeutic for me. It's very, very uh, wonderful experience for me. Um, so. so the, um, there's a large, a larger diameter here. So the big hole goes on the bottom and the small hole goes on the top. Okay. Now, before I put the top one on, I always put a belt on. So let me go get a belt over here. Yeah, so this is a used belt, but it'll do the job. It's still pretty good condition. So we 
got a belt on there. Alright, now we got the belt on, guys. So, we'll go ahead and put the top assembly on. I've got to get my washers here. I've got to put my washers on. There's two washers on top and one washer on the bottom. The washers were still sitting in the in the part so I didn't have to mess with the bottom ones but top ones you gotta assemble so like I said if you got a question if you wanna ask me go ahead and let me know because I I try my best to answer my comments if you have a question. Also, the tire is not going to go on until you pull pull the tire out a little bit and then it will seat down into place. And then you have a uh, E-ring or E-clip. Um, that one goes on as well. Now with the E-clip you can use pliers to put that on. So where the heck did my thing go? Use your pliers and squeeze the uh, e-clip. Squeeze the e-clip into place. So squeeze that back on. So let's get that on. It's tricky sometimes. There we go. The nice thing about E-clip is they do apply better pressure. They do hold the part on pl in place better than the, um, the little cut washer. So, okay. Let's plug this back in and we should be able to fire it back up. And it should go into play mode. So let's hope that idler motor is still good. I've found that with some Sanyos, um, the idler motor fails. And if that's the case, um, then it won't play. And it'll eat tapes even though you put new belts and tires on it. That's how you can discover a failure. If you've got a Sanyo beta cord, you put new belts on, you put new tires on, and it's still eating tapes, uh, that's your idler motor that has failed. Or you're not getting the voltage to your idler motor. So look for that. We're gonna go ahead now, we're gonna install, the, we're gonna insert a tape, and we're gonna see if we have playback. So let's go ahead now, we'll insert it, hit play. And it's now going to play once it gets past the bad spot.
This tape's got stickin'. Tape's got stickin' problems. I'll put a different tape in. Yeah, this tape's got stiction. Which is surprising because usually the Sony tapes don't have that problem, but every once in a while you'll come across one that has that issue. So, uh, let's pull, let's get this tape out. I'm going to use this tape. Okay, let's put this one in and see what this does. This is a beta 2, so... Yeah, we're having some issues. Guys, I'm gonna have to clean that drum. I gotta clean that drum before I can get anything accomplished because right away I can see that uh, we have a, a tape that's sticking to the drum. So maybe that tape doesn't have stiction. Maybe the stiction is caused by the um, head being the drum. The actual drum is dirty so. We're going to clean that. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So, let's get some. I'm just going to use some paper. I'm going to use a little, little bit of contact cleaner. And that'll kind of clean the drum. And I'm, I'm using a uh, paper because I don't want to damage, get a chance of damaging the heads. You can move the head out of the way while you're cleaning the drum. So, I'm going to just get some, I'm, I'm waiting for my rubbing alcohol to come in because I don't have Right now, I don't have any rubbing alcohol, so I'm just going to spray. Contact cleaner on the drum, and then I'm going to use my Q-tip. And we're going to clean the, just the top portion. I'm not even going down to the heads at all. I'm just making contact with the drum here. I'm just using the drum and I'm not getting near the heads. Um, and there's something sticky in here. So I wonder if somebody spilt soda or something. And uh, okay so I'm gonna move the head out of the way of the thing. So. I'm just trying to get the uh, majority of that stuff off of that head drum because I'm I'm waiting for alcohol to come in. I'm waiting for my alcohol to come in. So he can't seem to get it at the store anymore. I have to pay a ridiculous price on eBay just to get some freaking rubbing alcohol. But there's something sticky on this board. There's something really, really sticky. Yeah, some really sticky shit. Excuse my language, guys. I do apologize. I hope that didn't offend anybody. Um, but people viewing my channel are mainly guys anyway, so nobody gives a shit. Shit 
coming off in there. That's so much dirt. I should have checked that first. You know, that should have been the first thing I did was clean that drum here. But. And I'm not getting near the head at all. I'm not even touching the groove where the heads are, where the heads protrude through. Make sure you don't touch those. If you get a Q-tip on the head, it'll snag and break the head right, snap the head right off. So you have to be extremely careful when you're cleaning the drum. You just have to be really careful and move the I'm moving the head away from the drum. There's a, a little standard screwdriver you can put in there and you can move the head and you can just take your finger and touch it and just apply pressure and turn it and it'll turn. So and I can see the physical head. I want to count the head. One, two, Three. I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a three-head machine. Just by looking at it, I can tell. So get some contact here. Like I said, I'm not getting near it. I'm being very careful here, but I might have just a smidge of alcohol left enough to clear it. So, all right. Yeah, just turn your head when you're gonna do that. When you're getting near where the head would protrude through, just move your head so that doesn't happen. Because, trust me, if you snag a Q-tip, you can see the dirt on there. Somebody spilt something on this machine. So, somebody has done something. I wonder what the uh, pinch roller has. I bet you the pinch roller is going to have some dirt on it as well. This is what I use. I'm using contact cleaner because I don't have alcohol. And I do have a little bit of alcohol left that I will use to clean the head but I'm using the contact cleaner to get the um, drum clean before you know because I don't want to get anything on there This is a lot of dirt, a lot of dirt on this thing. Good thing is that the, the cotton will um, absorb the cleaner and it will definitely help. So.
just about ready to where I can start doing a testing. Okay, I'm going to clean the I'm sure that pinch roller is going to be filthy as well. Clean all your, you know, clean your, your, you know, pinch rollers. Clean your guide, your tape guides. Anything that your tape touches, clean it. Now, I do apologize for this video being a, a little long, but I want to make sure that some pinch roller. I'm gonna get new contact cleaner too. I need to get some more of this contact cleaner I'm running out of that. think it would do a very good job I don't know maybe it would but I just don't think contract cleaner is something you should be using on the heads and unless you're just using it for the drum to clean the drum like I am but it has a lubricant in it so that's why you don't want to use it on the heads because it does have a lubricant in it. So that's why I don't like to use it. That's one of the reasons why I don't want to use it on, you know. So let's just clean this up a little bit. So it's gonna clean the audio and control track head too. But I will I got enough alcohol. I have enough alcohol that I can clean the, the heads with. So I'm just going to get the majority of the stuff off of here. Uh, this is like absolutely filthy. This must have been sitting in somebody's garage or storage unit and probably just sitting there and collecting dirt, dust, dirt. You know, condensation can make the dust wet, and so basically, I'm just trying to clean the. I want to clean the capstan here too, so I'm gonna have to pull that capstan out in order to do a thorough uh, cleaning on that, which uh, you know I don't have. can't use that tape now because that tape is contaminated now. So I can't use that tape anymore. But I will pass forward. I will forward through it. There we go. I got enough alcohol out of there to where now I can uh, clean my, my heads. You can use a standard screwdriver and just turn the head. Okay, well, yeah, that was. That head was dirty for sure. Got a little 
example, the alcohol left here. Come on. I'm sucking fumes. nothing left in there. I am completely out of alcohol. Completely. So this is going to have to do until I can get the uh, alcohol coming back in. And I'm going to use my alcohol more sparingly because um, now I realize that I can't, still can't get it at the stores. Because they're fucking everybody is blaming them on that damn coronavirus shit. You know, it's like, oh yeah, that's why we don't make it anymore. That's why we don't have it. Corona, coronavirus. Yeah, well, I'm tired of hearing about it. So, okay. And one thing I will say, I hope I don't offend anybody, but... I am so glad we got that piece of shit out of the White House. Once Trump is removed from the White House, the country is going to succeed. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and forward through the part that was contaminated. That idler sounds like it. The the lubricant has dried up in it. It's no longer sticking. I'm I'm gonna turn my TV on here. And let's get a, let's see if we can get a picture. I don't know if we can, but we're going to find out here. Turn my audio off because I don't want YouTube to sit there and give me bad time because give me some stupid copyright content thing. it up into the front input jacks of my 1000 now we're gonna see if we can get a picture on this bad boy which I hope we can because um, that would be nice to have a picture I still gotta figure out uh, how to repair that circuit board I know how to repair I can repair the circuit board, but I still need that other piece so that I can not only glue it back on, but I have to jumper the leads. I have to jump the leads now uh, because the leads have been broke. So, does have a picture. I can't show for very long, but it does have a picture. Look. See, I can show that much. That's all I can show. But we're still having an issue with, uh, we need to take those take-up-and-supply reels 
off and re-lubricate them. And it just shut itself off. Oh, maybe I hit play or hit stop. Maybe that's what I did. But I can't show more than that. If I show any more than that, and then, you know, YouTube gets all pissed off. We're still having some issues, so... But it is playing. So basically what we're going to need to do is take the take up and supply reels off, clean the spindles, clean the posts, put some oil on each of the posts. Um, I need to take uh, apart some other pieces clean them, re-oil them, and put it back together. For one thing, this little guide here, it needs to be taken off. Pinch roller needs to be taken off. Just I need to do a, a full, thorough cleaning because I'm sure this machine has been sitting for so long that it, you know, everything is, all the old lubricant is dried up. but has a good good picture so yeah we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, um, put this thing back together and uh, we will do another video on um, doing a service we're going to do a full service on this machine, but I have to wait until I can get some more alcohol. Um, I need to do, I need to purchase some new belts for this thing. Um, and I need to basically do some really good cleaning because this machine definitely needs to be cleaned. And we've got the mechanical working on it. However, it does sometimes shut down. And I think that it's basically because the lubricant has dried up on the idler. Uh, on the idlers. So the uh, reels. The take-up reels. The take-up and supply reels. The posts are completely dry. And it doesn't, uh, so it needs to re -lube so that they can move freely. Um, releasing the brake and it should spin nice and free. But it's not, so that tells me that we've got an issue. So, we'll do another video on this thing later on. Well, we got it all back together. We will do a video on this another time. One thing that this has is it does have a balance uh, feature. This is a volume. You can go to the left speaker or the right speaker. Um, so this is a high-end machine and it does have three heads. I think it's a three-head machine. Um, it, you know, it has this fold-down door with all these features, you know, for turning Beta Hi-Fi on or off. And, you know, you got some other um, buttons here. And uh, But basically, this is uh, one of the higher-end models. Um, that much I did find out uh, about it. And some of that knowledge I already knew, but it's always good to have, you know. And our tracking is, is pretty good, too. We got perfect tracking. Uh, here's for a volume for, you can plug headphones in. 
you know, um, and I do have a remote that will work for this machine, and, uh, that I will use, but the fact that this, this folds down, and that is nice, this is a very nice machine, so when we do the full service on it, we'll do that, and then we'll do, like, a demo, and we'll show what some of these buttons do, and, uh, you know, there's, uh, wow, beta hi-fi record level. Sorry guys, my battery died. But we'll do, after we do the full service on it, and we'll take a look at some of its features. Uh, I think I can, I put, I cleaned this thing with Lysol because it was so filthy. And, uh, I can actually see some of the, uh, front parts are shiny still I think cosmetically this thing is in pretty good shape you know um, one thing that I want to know is you know I have a suspicion that this one has a uh, idler motor that is not working to its fullest also it's making a noise when it plays tapes so I think that the idler motor is going to have to be replaced because I just don't think that this, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be, you know, um, I just have to order some things for it. I do have another motor that I could put, another idler motor. I have another one. So I can definitely, you know, uh, put a new one of those in and then I'm going to order the belts. And uh, we've got brand new tires in it, so, but I'm still going to order some more tires because, uh, you know, you still, you, I still like to have a stock. I usually do. I usually have a supply of belts and tires because if I buy the Sanyo models, I know automatically that I need belts and tires. And, you know, so I think this machine can be... This machine does have a lot of potential. It's a model that is not uh, listed on YouTube. I cannot find. I found one one video on a guy talking about high-end machines, and this was he said that this was something that he he had the same machine and he bought it new, and he said that it was a high-end machine. And I think he was right on that because the more I, I'm looking at the heads, it's three heads. Uh, I think it's a three head. It may be a four head, but I doubt it. it. It looked like it was a three. It looked like it had three heads. But anyway, um, you know, you got the volume uh, meter. You got a balance here. So this is a nice machine and uh, we're going to explore it further. And uh, looks like it's got, it's kind of broken right there, but we'll do that later. So anyway, this is the Betamax man signing off. Goodbye. See you later.